Now, what is the correct way to pronounce your stage name? Uh, the correct way to pronounce my stage name is Blake. Blake is simple. Do people mispronounce this? Uh, when everybody try to be funny, talking about block A and all that, from that video, that Ken Peel video, but other than that, they know what it is. Do people misspell it? They better not. Now, where did this stage name of yours derive from? What are the details of its origin? Um, my mommy and daddy, you know, that's my birth name. They thought I was going to be um, a boy at first. And my name, well, my name was going to be Antonio, and my middle name was going to be Blake. But they figured out I was still I was gonna be a girl, so it was like, well, Blake could still work. And I think it fits me, so yeah. Shout out to my mom and daddy. Have you met any other female Blakes? Actually, yes, and they had the same middle name as me too. Uh, it was in my ballet class when I was in, I was like three years old. But yeah, it was like one or two other Blake Elizabeths. And that where they at? I wonder what they doing. Actually, like, dang, well, why why y'all at Blake Elizabeth? Why y'all at? You've also met male Blakes as well? Yeah, I yeah, I, mean, I can't just think about them off rip, but yeah, I've definitely met, you know, male Blakes before. Whether it was online or offline, have you met more male or female Blakes? More uh, males, because other than like the girl, well, some girls will comment under my stuff like, oh, we got the same name or whatever, but the only Blakes that I like to remember just meeting like in person for real was from my ballet class. And was there a name to this ballet class back then? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that lady name. I'm really a cheerleader. See, I, I didn't care for ballet like that. I did it, but then I had to finish the season because my mama was like, you can't quit. But I, I figured out what competitive cheer was in the middle of me doing ballet. And I, like, hated it after a while. I'm like, I hate this. I just want to cheer. So I, I know my cheer coach's name, but I ain't going to lie. I, I'm, I'm sorry, lady. And what part of the world did this take place in? It took place in Lake Charles, Louisiana, the bottom of the boot. Now, you've already given the origin of your first name, but what about your middle name? My middle name? Um, I, I don't know where that come from. I guess it just flow good. Blake Elizabeth. I, I don't even know. Queen Elizabeth. I don't know. Now, for you, why incorporate your birth name as your stage name, there are some that avoid that. They may use a nickname or yeah. an alias that has nothing to do with their birth name. Um, cause shit, Blake is Blake. Like Beyonce is Beyonce. Like, hey. Has that ever been a concern or even end up being an issue for you of some sort using your real name as your stage name? Like doxing for example, and things of that nature. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, it, it ain't never really been no issue. Like, you know, it's Blake. <laughs> like. Did you have any nicknames growing up by any chance? Yes, I did. And that I still get called that nickname, and it, it it's Tukey. Um, <laughs> if y'all know me for real, y'all know it's Tukey, Tooks, Tooks if you're nasty. But yeah, that's my nickname, my daddy. And he called me that. And my close friends, whatever, they proud of me. Oh, Tuki, yeah, you know. And I'm do you know funny. why? Do you know the reasoning why? I have no idea why they call me that. They just been calling me that my whole life. Like, I don't know where the hell Tuki comes from, but I'm Tooks. Like, I, I really don't. I don't know where they get that. I don't know. I just, shit, I just know I've been Tuki. <laughs> Was there ever a thought on incorporating that for a stage? Oh, game? hell no. That's low-key embarrassing, like. Oh, uh-uh. No. Not at all. <laughs> no. Now, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened with your stage name, if anything? Uh, I don't think nothing crazy ever happened. Nothing out of the norm? Nah, they know not to play with me. <laughs> now, what about your music? What stage names have you gone for with your music? Okay, now, whenever I was younger, my stage name used to be Blake Sparkles. And I absolutely hated it. I always wanted to go by just Blake because Blake Sparkles was just so corny and lame to me. I hated that name. Like, I used to get mad whenever they would, whenever they would introduce me. Blake Sparkles, I'm like, it's just Blake. I used to get mad. I don't know. I just always, it just sounded too kiddy to me. I don't know. And who came up with that? Who the? 
my team at the time because like we had like you know our own label sparkle productions but i think sparkle productions came from black sparkles i really don't know but my team and management at the time that i was working with they came up with that name it probably was cute for back then like okay i guess i'm cool with it now but back then oh i hated that shit. i'm probably just cool with it because they don't call me that no more i don't know no longer with that team or management yeah no i mean it's still family though Still family, you know. Like, biologically related? Or? No, I mean, sh damn near. I mean, because, you know, I started my music when I was 10 years old. So, you know, I'm 21 now. So, like, I look at, like, you know, my old manager as, like, my uncle, really. And I just ran into him the other day, actually. Yeah, literally. And why didn't things work out in that scenario there? Um... Basically, I, I feel like he, you know, he, he just took me as far as he could, you know. In Louisiana, you know, I come from a real small place. So, you know, there's only so much you could do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it wasn't like no beef or anything, but, you know, he just took me, you know, as far as he could take me. And is this also in reference to Lake Charles as well? Yeah, Lake Charles, real, real small. And was that the only stage name you had for music? Yeah, it was only, you know, Blake Sparkles, you know. Sometimes I go by Blake the Plug since I was 16. <laughs> Blake the Plug, yeah. But it's, it's really just Blake. That's what it boils down to, just Blake. And what's the meaning behind Blake the Plug and who coined that? Um, I coined that <laughs> uh, when I was 16. I had a summer job. Uh, I was, y'all know. I was moving that dope. <laughs> I was 16, yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't like in a chapel or nothing like that, but I was like, I need some money and I need a summer job. So I sold weed for a little while, for the summer, you know. And then, yeah, that's why. I, and I put Blake the plug in my bio. I was like, okay, that's kind of going to like, let it's kind it's kind of going to let them know without me just saying like, hey, you know, I sell weed. <laughs> So I just put that in my bio, like, you know, okay, maybe that'll give them, like, they're going to be, you the plug, plug for what? Y'all know. Yeah, and it just been in my bio ever since, Blake the Plug. Now, I asked you a lot of questions about your stage name. With everything considered, any regret with the final stage name choice? Nah, because it's always what I wanted. Always what I wanted, Blake. Anything else you want to mention about your stage name? or question you weren't asked, but want to know about it? Um, not really. I mean, it's, it's just my name. I mean, it, it took me a little while to like my name because growing up, I kind of always wish I had something a little more girlier. But I think now I love my name. It fits me. Like I said, it's Blake. <laughs> and speaking of that, do people ever question your gender? Uh, oh, no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Asking you respectfully, not being funny. No, there. that's funny. That's, I mean, now you know what? I'm not even going to lie to you. Whenever I go to the doctor, they might, like, expect a boy. And they'll be like, oh, I, I thought, like, nah, it's me. And, like, you know, I got some mail from Chase the other day, and it said Mr. Blake E., you know, like my whole name. And I was like, ah, oh, they tried it. But, yeah, no, it, it doesn't really get confused. What about on the phone with, like, customer service or anything of that nature? Uh-uh, they hear my voice, they know. Unless they crazy. Just curious there. All right. <laughs> now, care to share your race, ethnicity, or nationality? Yeah, I'm black. Uh, you could say Creole, though, you know. Creole from Louisiana, yeah. And what is the main language you speak at this point? I speak English. I know a little Spanish, though. You know, I actually graduated with a uh, foreign language court. So, yeah. And how many grades, or what grades, did you end up taking Spanish language class for? Um, well, I went to a private school from kindergarten to seventh grade. So it was, like, mandatory from those uh, grades. But um, ninth and tenth grade, did I take? Damn, I think I took Spanish in Edwell. Maybe not eighth grade, but I feel like I took Spanish in like really almost every year of school. Cause I had to do two years for sure in high school in order to get that court. Yeah, I did a, damn, I did a lot of Spanish, a lot. <laughs>
Care to share the name of the private school you're referencing here as well as the high school as well? Yeah, I went to ICCS, Immaculate Conception Cathedral School, and I went to Westlake in Atlanta, so elementary in Lake Charles, and I went to Westlake High in Atlanta. Love Westlake. Go Lions. Now, when it came to that private school, just for clarification, was a foreign language a requirement, or was it actually Spanish language that was the requirement? Um, it was just Spanish. We didn't have, like, French. You know how some schools you could choose? It was, like, yeah, mandatory Spanish. What about in high school when you took Spanish language as well? Was that a requirement or an elective at that point? Um, I think I had, I think I had to do at least one year. But I just decided to do it again my senior year so I could get that court. And I, it was Spanish was cool. I, I like my teacher. I like Miss Miller. And again, a foreign language was a requirement or Spanish was the actual It was a foreign language because uh, we had the option to choose between French and Spanish. But I chose Spanish because, I mean, that's what I've been doing since kindergarten. I already had an idea of what was going on. And whenever you would take Spanish language class, would you take that class serious? Were you trying to honestly learn the language, <laughs> give it a shot? I'd say I really was because I take school very serious. Like, I was popular in school, I'd say, but I was a popular girl doing everybody work for money. Like, I'm really smart. I'm very smart. So I, I take school, like, I was stressed about school. Like, uh -uh, I didn't play. I still don't play about school. And when it comes to that, mind state with school was that just your own uh thinking there about taking school serious or was that like ingrained with your family for example was well, it your parents drilling you to take school seriously for example they didn't have to drill me that it, it's just in me i'm serious about everything i do and i'm real competitive so like you know that that was the, it was it was a blessing for them for me to be you know just so you know they didn't they, they wasn't really on me too much about school cuz they didn't have to tell me to go study i was just going to do that anyway i got to get like all a's and b's like i have to win for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time care to share where you were born i was born in lake charles louisiana and care to share where you were raised. I was, I was raised in Lake Charles. You know, I moved to Atlanta when I was 15. So you still could say I did, you know, a little growing up in Atlanta. But, like, I'm a country girl at heart. Like, I used to ride horses, trail ride, all that. Like, I'm Louisiana to the core. And when it comes to Lake Charles, did it get any more specific than that for you? Mm, what you mean? Like, a certain portion you represent of Lake Charles. Um... Not really. Like, I can't just say I represent no hood or nothing, you know. I'm from the suburbs. Uh, I was, shit, I was right on the south side of Lake Charles. Like, it's not really like Beauchene Drive. Like, that's what I can say. But, like, you know, it's not like, oh, this my, you know, I represent. Like, nah, I'm just from Lake Charles. Now, for those in the audience that might not be familiar with Lake Charles, but may be familiar with New Orleans mm -hmm. or Baton Rouge. Yeah. Care to share how far Lake Charles was from these areas? Yeah, BR is like two hours. New Orleans is three. Uh, we like the bottom of the boot for real. Like if you look on the map, we're, I'm in the bottom of the boot, like the bottom. It get real country out there. I, I, I think Baton Rouge and New Orleans is a little more city-like, but we like, we country. And I really feel like you got to come more so in my area, the Lafayette, New Iberia, Lake Charles area. So, you know, get the real food. That's just my take, though. And everybody that's from there, they, they know what it's in for. 337. The real food. Can you shed some more light on that? The real food. Um, Everybody just know New Orleans. You know, like, they just know about it and Baton Rouge and stuff and think, oh, they got the best food, they got the best food. No. You got to come a little deeper south to get that real, that real Cajun flavor, that, like, the real deal. Like, we can go head to toe. We can go head to head with that, like, 337 against 504, 225 when it comes to the cooking. Like, they ain't touching us. And speaking of Atlanta, what was the reason for the move to Atlanta? And how far of a distance is that as well from Lake Charles? Um, It's nine hours. And the move was really for my career. You know, me and my mom moved out here when I was 15. And her and my daddy got a divorce around that same time. So it was really perfect, you know? It was perfect. Me and my mama hit it. 
yeah. and still reside in Atlanta today? Yeah, we still live in Atlanta. My dad used to live in Louisiana, though, but he come visit a lot. Certain part of Atlanta you represent? Yeah, uh, the south side of Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a South Side ass hoe, I guess. I'm always on the South Side. Like, that's all I know. South Side. Like, I love the South Side. Now, what was that really like growing up in Lake Charles for you? Um, It was cool. At times, I really didn't like it because, you know, it's just so small. Like, I'm from the country, y'all. Like, it's just small. But... Now, I mean, I, I really love my culture, though. I love where I come from. Like, you know, I, like I said, I used to ride horses. I used to trail ride, go to Zodico's and stuff like that. Y'all probably don't know what Zodico is, but, you know, it's a certain genre of music we have out there. And we have a certain dance to it that we do, you know. I love where I'm from, though. Growing up, not so much because it, it just felt so, so small. It was just kind of so limited, but I love where I'm from. How small are you talking? Mm. Care to share any examples of how small? How small we could say. I mean, we got probably got like, maybe like, uh, let me got five high schools, I think. Maybe. Let me see. War, Washington, LaGrange, St. Louis. Yeah, we, yeah, it's real small. It, tiny. It's, it's not, you know, everybody know everybody. Got a shopping mall? Yeah, yeah, Friend Lake Mall. We got, yeah, we got a shopping mall. And when you say country, what's the countryest thing you've seen in Lake Charles? <laughs> the countryest thing I've seen? Um, dang, I don't know. Maybe, um, well, it wasn't in Lake Charles, but it was in, I think, Lafayette. Because my mama is from New Iberia, Louisiana. We, we like, the only family that lived in Lake Charles, which was about an hour away from New Iberia. But um, that's where my family's at, like an hour away. But I guess you could say maybe when we had a horse in the club and the horse was dancing. Probably that. I don't know. Care to shed some light on that? Oh, uh, it was after an event we had out there. And shit, they, they brought the horse in the club and he was dancing. A horse in a nightclub? Mm hmm Country club? Hip-hop club? Uh, I mean, everybody country out there, so it don't, you know, they they gonna play the Zodico, they gonna, you know. At the end of the day, it could be hip hop, but we all still country. The accent, the dressing, like, you know. So was that a culture shock, for lack of a better phrase, moving from a place like Lake Charles, as you described, to Atlanta? Yeah, it was definitely a culture shock. Uh, I feel like I never seen that many black people before. I was like, wow, my neighbors are black? You live like this? Like, it, it, it was just, yeah, it was crazy. Like, you know, because I come from, like, you know, Lake Charles is, I, well, it, maybe it could be majority white. I don't know. But, like, in my neighborhood growing up, it was only, like, four black families, including us. Uh, in the private school I went to, I was the black girl. So the fact that, like, you know, I came out here and everybody was black, I was just like, wow, like, this is crazy. Like, this is cool. Like, my Spanish teacher was black. Everybody was black. It don't matter. Like, it was just, it was different. But, shit, I love it. It's cool. And was that easy for you, that transition from a Lake Charles to an Atlanta, a small area to a big area? Or was that tough for you at all? No, nah, I think it was easy. Atlanta really, you know, welcomed me with open arms. Like, I, I, I love Atlanta. I do. Like, they really welcomed me. It wasn't, like, on the weird, like, because it's, it's still the South. You know what I'm saying? It's still the South. So, it, yeah, it was cool. Now, in terms of Hurricane Katrina, there was a lot of people from Louisiana that migrated to Atlanta mm -hmm. because of that natural disaster. Yeah. When you moved to Atlanta, was that before Katrina, after Katrina? That was um after Katrina. Katrina happened when I was like five years old. Yeah, I was like five or six. I, I remember actually my uh, kindergarten teacher, she was telling us about it before it even came. But... Katrina had really messed up New Orleans, and then about, because a lot of people from New Orleans came to Lake Charles to evacuate, but then two weeks later, Hurricane Rita came, and she tore up Lake Charles, so everybody had to, you know, leave again, so Rita had really affected us. I remember we had went to um, Opelousas, Louisiana, for about a month. I remember I was just watching the Little Rascals every day, all day. Um, and hurricane season, that's around my birthday, too, so like, oh my God, it... A few hurricanes messed up my birthdays. I really don't remember if um 
Rita or Katrina messed it up, but Ike messed my birthday up for sure. You know, we got all them hurricanes on this. Did any of those hurricanes affect your actual dwelling, your place of living? Uh, no, our houses be pretty sturdy, so we ain't really never had no issues with that. Now, when it came to growing up in Lake Charles from the time you were born to up to 15, what was the top point for you during that upbringing? What was your highest point, your most positive moment growing up in that area for you? Um, I had a lot of positive points. You know, whenever I was doing competitive cheer, that's like something I really love to do. I still could flip to this day, actually. But um, whenever I cheer, you know, that was some, some like good moments in life. Like I had a ball with my team, you know, it was like, it was like a second family, you know. And also whenever I would get to trail ride, you know, I love the Zotico. I love all the country stuff. I love horses, four wheelers, all that, getting dirty in the mud and stuff. Like, you know, those was like, you know, just the, my everyday life was good. Like, you know, it was just, yeah. How far did you get with cheerleading? Um, I what you mean, like how far I got? Like some people go beyond high school, college, and they're See, a cheerleader for a national football team for a couple yeah. Of that um, mean? I mean, of course, growing up, I always wanted to maybe like cheer for the Saints or something like that. But um, I always did competitive cheer, so it was always like serious. Like I cheer for my school too, just to do it. But really competitive cheer, like, you know, like it didn't have nothing to do with school. We'd always travel for competitions. We'd go to Florida, you know, Texas. We'd go to different places. So, yeah, we, cheer was, we ain't never make it to Worlds. Worlds is like the big cheer competition. Like, it's like the big one. Like, if you win Worlds, like, you, yeah. And, but I feel like if I would have kept going, see, I had to quit when I was 11. Because, you know, my music started to, you know, kind of take over that. But if I would have kept going, oh, I would have made it to Worlds. We would have made it. Any regret on that? Stopping uh, at 11 when you did? No, I don't have no regrets. I mean, at the time it was very sad because it's like, cheer? Like, no. Like, not, how am I quit cheer? Like, I eat, think, and breathe cheer. But I also do that with music, too. So I'm like, all right, let me... I had to make that decision. I remember, I remember my cheer coach, Coach Raymond, came to the house, and oh my God, it was a big thing. I was sick. I was sick, but yeah. They were trying to discourage you from music? Oh no, not at all. You know, they was always supportive of whatever I wanted to do. But I was a flyer at the time, so it was kind of, I knew I was kind of, you know, cheating my team a little bit, because you know, flyers would throw in the air. So if they, if I was gone, what was my stunt group gonna do? Like, they couldn't stunt. Like, you know, so I knew I made the right decision. Ever get injured being a flyer? Um, not being a flyer. I mean, I got the wind knocked out of me before. Hurt my shoulder from falling. But uh, from flipping, I broke my forearm before, actually. That was my first bone I broke. Yeah, I had a little pink cast. Everybody was all on me. Like, let me sign it. Let me sign it. Yeah. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, what was the bottom point for you during your upbringing? What was your lowest point, perhaps, or most negative moment growing up, if there was one? Um, I don't really think there was one. Um, I could one. I I mean, one of my lowest moments, you could say. Not um. It wasn't what you, you could still say I'm growing up. It happened when I was like 19. You know, I had got admitted to the psych ward or whatever. That was a real low moment for me. You know, I was really depressed and, you know, I was going through, you know, what I was going through. But I say that was like one of the lowest moments in my life whenever I made it there. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, like I'm in jail. Like, yeah, that was pretty bad for me. This was at a time you were in Atlanta. Mm -hmm, yeah, I was in Atlanta. I think I was like, yeah, I was 19 whenever, yeah, a few weeks after my 19th birthday, I was admitted. Do you want to shed any light on that? Um, yeah, shout out to all the people I met in there. Y'all was so cool. Uh, I hope y'all are doing okay. You really meet some of the coolest people in the psych ward, though. I ain't even gonna lie. Uh, I was losing my mind in there. My mind, like, <laughs> I was losing my mind. But, I mean, hey, I it was mandatory. I had to knock my little days out. But uh, I ain't going back. I'm not going back. Like, no, I can't go back there. 
But how I long, met some cool people. How long were you in there for? I was in there just for five days. I had to do a mandatory 72 hours, and then you leave whenever the doctor say you could leave. So I was in there like, why would I? Like, yeah, I'm good. Like, hello. Like, I'm not crazy. And for those in the audience that heard of a psych ward but never experienced one, what is that really like? Uh, I'd say it's like a mini jail, probably. I never been to jail, but how I imagine, you know, like the beds was hard. I had my roommate. My roommate was so cool. I love her. I still be running into her at the gas station because she don't stay far from me. I still be running into her. Hey, Shante. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. It was, uh, I don't know, you can't wear hoodies, you can't have str shoe strings, nothing like that. Um, phone cord is really short, you know, you got hours you can be on the phone. Um, can't really have colored pencils. It's a lot of restrictions in there. But I did, just, I did a lot of word searches in Sudoku the past time, but it, that, that really ain't a place y'all want to go. I mean, if you need the help, you know, you need the help, but... That ain't, yeah, it, that ain't cool. That that ain't nowhere I really want to go back to. Like, no. Like I said, the people was cool, though. Really cool people I met. Whatever you were going through mentally, that's been, that's something you've surpassed. That's something that's under the bridge, for lack of a better phrase. That's something that you've overcome. Yeah, definitely. Um, I still, you know, go. I still deal with, you know, my mental health issues and stuff, you know. But, I mean, that's to be expected, but I don't think I'm, like, in the deep end where I was before, you know. I just manage it the best way I can, you know. I, I still have my little issues, though, but everybody do. Now... There are some people who say things like, don't know if I'll make it to see the age of 18. Mm -hmm. Or 21, for example. Yeah. In this case, the psych ward incident happened at 19 for you. Mm -hmm. Did you have any of these thoughts yourself? Yeah, I kind of did. I was like, okay, if I keep going the route I'm going, I don't, I might not make it to see 21. I did think that, but like, not unlike me getting killed or nothing like that, but shit, me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I could keep, you know, you know, I, I did think that. I don't think that no more. Should I made it? I'm 21. But, yeah. And care to share your birthday as well, the month and the day, perhaps? September 14th. Me, Nas, and Amy Winehouse have the same birthday. Do you know any of them personally? Not yet. Chance? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, not yet. Now, what do you make of that outcome that you are on the other side of that equation? You made it to 21. Mm, one more time. What do you make of that outcome that you are on the other side of the equation? Because you told yourself at one point, if you keep going the way your things are going or however way you mm -hmm. phrased it, you might not be able to see 21. Yeah. But now that you have seen 21, what do you make of that outcome? Uh, I'm proud of myself. It's lit. Like, I, I, I got so much to live for, like... It's like it's lit. Like I'm proud of myself, cause I, I mean, you know, I be going through, you know, my little stuff, but I'm stronger than all that, honestly. I try to be. Knowing what you know now, on the other side of that coin, hypothetically speaking, what would you have said to your younger self back then, if anything? Mm. I still tell this to myself now. I gotta stop worrying about things that I can't control. Um, and stop letting so much stuff get to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my emotions are real. Like, oh my God, like, I be bothered. <laughs> I be, I do get bothered. Like, a lot of stuff really, like, I'm real emotional. So maybe I should be a little, not saying not emotional, but like, maybe be a little harder. I don't know, but. Stop letting all that shit get to you. Like, stop worrying about other people so much. Anything else you want to mention about your upbringing or question you weren't asked, people want to know about it? Mm, not really. I, I, I had a really good upbringing. I always say my life is a movie, like, literally. Like, it was like, yeah, I, I had a great upbringing. Two parents that love me, you know, regular cheerleader, 
country girl, you know, I had a good upbringing. For those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, who is Blake? Who is Blake? Um, Blake is a recording artist, actress, based out of the boot, based out of Louisiana. Um, yeah, that's what I do. And I'm cool as hell. And I'm good people. Be Let's that... Didn't mean to cut you off there. You're good. I just had to sum it up. You were good. Be that as it may, what is the biggest misconception of you at this point? Um, the biggest misconception of me? Um, only thing I could say maybe is, you know, with the acting that I used to do, they try to compare me to that character a little too much. And it's like, all right, that was a role. Like, I went by my name. But that was just a role, um, like, y'all don't have to, you know, like, no, like, I'm not, I'm not a bitch in real life, you know, maybe sometimes, but, you know, like, I don't steal, I'm not disrespectful, like, you know, that's just, some people think that based on the role that I did, but, um, nah, they, as they get, as I'm, you know, branching off from that for real, they getting another real me. Have you lost opportunities because of this misconception? Nah, I don't think so. Any regret using your real name and your stage name for that character? Mm. Because of that misconception? Maybe if it was under a different name, people would not have that misconception? Yeah, either? not really any regrets. Because, you know, it was, you know, good, you know, to get my name out there and who I, you know, who I am. But, um... Probably so if I went by a different name and that, it probably would. It probably would be a little different. They probably wouldn't think it was so much real life. And was that a character in reference to Country Wayne? Yeah, in the Country Wayne skits, uh, I, was, I went by Blake. And how did you become a part of that cast of characters, that ensemble there of his? Yeah, um, the director actually hit me up one day. I actually met Chase because I was in a, one of my homeboys' music videos. I was a video girl, and Chase was the director for that. And he called me one day and was like, yo, we need you to play a 15-year-old girl. And I'm like, all right, I don't even know. How he even know I could act? Shit, I barely knew. I mean, I... I I knew I, I knew I could act, but like before that, I've never really, you know, acted for real. So they hit me up and we did one skit. And after that one skit, like it was just over with. Like we just kept doing it. I did it for what, two, three years? Yeah. Now, what is Country Wayne really like? Oh, uh, Wayne is cool. Wayne is Wayne, like, like he is in the video. It was like that, yeah. Best advice you ever received from him? or most important thing you learned being around them so far? Mm, what can I say I learned? I don't know, he uh, he dropped a lot of stuff on you. So like, it, 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 it's, it's so much, you know? But I, I don't know. I learned, you know, different, you know, stuff you probably could say as an actor, you know, but um, well, actress. I don't even know. He. Shit, Wayne, Wayne said a lot of stuff, you know. I mean, every time, you know, in between breaks of us filming and stuff, you know, he, he was always dropping knowledge. So it's not really one thing I could just, you know, pull out, but, you know, he was just always, you know. Anything else you want to mention about Country Wayne or a question you weren't asked, people want to know about him? Mm, not really. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Um, huh. That I was all crack or something. <laughs> but they said that, they, look, I don't know if that's being funny or what, but they said that because I was losing weight. But I was losing weight because I have something. <laughs> Y'all, I'm dead. I don't know why they got me so dead. That was like the, like, come on now. But I was losing weight because I have something called CHS. Uh, I'm allergic to weed now. I used to be a stoner, like a real stoner, but I'm like 60 some days sober. I'm allergic to weed. It's called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And when I first got it, I was throwing up a lot. 
Like, because that's what it is. Like, you throw up a lot, like, back to back to back to back. And you're in, like, really bad stomach pain. So, you got to go to the hospital. So, they was trying to be funny in the comments. Like, oh, she doing more than smoking. Uh, what is she? And I'm like, I've been sick. Like, you know. My mom had to cuss a few of them out. Because it's like, don't play with me like that. But that was probably, like, the craziest thing. Like, I done heard. Like, what do y'all mean? Like, what? I was just sick. Like, you know. So, yeah, no more weed for me, sadly. Now, just for the record, have you ever done cocaine or crack? Nah, i never done coke or crack. Not really my thing. And when it came to this allergic or this allergy, mm -hmm. how was that even discovered? Uh, I don't even know. It's crazy because there's not really much research on it. They can't even tell you why some people get it and why some don't. Like, it, if it just happens to you, it happens. You know, I started smoking when I was 18. So I really wasn't smoking, like, half my life or just for a really, really long time. But, yeah, I've been, I've been dealing with it for, like, two years. That's when I first figured out about it because I would get sick. And then I would throw up, go to the hospital, get better. Then I would come back out, wait a few days, and I start smoking again. But recently, the last few episodes I had, they was like really crazy. Like I knew it was serious whenever I went to the hospital for every day. I went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I went three days in a row. So I'm like, okay, I can't keep living like this. And it got to the point where I couldn't even drink water. Like I was fiending for water. Like, y'all, can I please have some ice water? They was like, no. I'm like, okay, I can't drink water. Oh, yeah, this is serious. I can't smoke no more. I can't do this. Did you have to go through allergy tests to get this figured out? Or were you just naturally removing things out of your life to figure this out? Like quitting weed, for example. Um, no. I went to, um, well, the first time I had got sick with it, a few doctors didn't know. And that was kind of around the time COVID was still kind of popping or whatever you say. Someone was like, is it COVID? Like, some doctors really didn't know. They was like, maybe it could be just a stomach bug, a little food poisoning or something. But I'd say, like, because, I, I, yeah, that first episode, like, I went to the hospital, like, four times. So I would say by my third visit, the one doctor, she smelled the weed on my uh, jacket. She was like, you smoke weed? I'm like, yeah. She was like, that's what it is. I'm like, huh? Like, no way. She was like, yeah, it, it, it's weed. And then a lot of some doctors don't even know about it, but I remember it was a female doctor. She was like, it's the weed. And I, was, I was like, I cannot believe that. And then when I stopped smoking, hey, like I, I stopped getting sick. Like I haven't been to the hospital since then. And like I said, I'm 60 something days sober. And like, you know, I slowly but surely I recovered, started eating again, drinking water and stuff like that, you know. Now, how much weight loss do you think it's been? I had got down to like, I'd say at least 112. I had got down to that. Currently, I'm like 112. I'm a little thick now. Nah, I gained a little weight. I'm like 124. Yeah. But at the time, I was I was 120. And then I had dropped probably like the 112. But I ain't that big. So like, I, I, had, I had looked sick. <laughs> I had looked small. What's the average usually weight-wise for you? Well, before I started being depressed and all that, I was really, I was a solid 140. I was a solid 140. Man, I'm trying to get back to that, actually. I'm going to get back to it soon, but it's hard to gain weight, y'all. It's, it's really hard. It's really hard to gain weight, but slowly but surely, it's coming back. Reflecting back on your use of weed, mm -hmm. do you think that this was an allergy that took time to build into one? Or do you think this was there from the start? You just didn't hone in on it from the beginning. I have no idea. Like, it's, it's little to no research. We don't really know about it, for real. I mean, the people that have it, they know about it. But, like, if I tell somebody I'm allergic to weed, they, be, they laugh. And I'm like, nah, like, I'm serious. Like, I swear to God, Google it. So I, I don't know where that come from. I really don't know. I remember the first time I got sick, though, I was at a Mexican restaurant, me and my mom and her boyfriend. And I was like, I ate. I ate my ass off, too. Like, I ate. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was like the last supper. I ate good. Then I was like, oh, no, my stomach. And then I went outside, and I threw up so much. Like, y'all, it was so 
much. And then we thought it was like, okay, maybe the food was bad or whatever, but that third doctor, it's that weed. Now, do you know what age this was when it was discovered? That that first incident there? Not maybe when this was discovered, because mm-hmm. you said third doctor, but that incident at the Mexican restaurant. Do you remember what age you were? Because you said you started smoking at 18. Yeah. So. Um, was I 20 then? Just trying to create a uh, time lapse here. I'm trying to, th- let me, let me remember my 20th birthday. What did I do for my? Yeah, I was, I was 19. Yeah, I think I was 19 for my first episode. Yeah, I think I was, I think, I think I was 19. Now, by 19, on that first episode, how heavy of a weed smoker were you in those days? Mm, I'd probably smoke like a 3.5 a day. But if I'm with my friends, a little more, you know, because we matching, you know, and stuff like that. Were you addicted to weed? Mm, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't say addicted. But, I mean, I don't know. I smoked every day, all day. Yeah, I was a stoner. Probably so. And how were you able to sober up and quit? Um, I just did it cold turkey like I, I had to. Like, it, it was no choice. You know, I, I got a lot of willpower. So I, I just stopped. I mean, I was pissed off them first few days, of course. Hell, I still get mad. Like, I can't smoke. But, hey, you know, it gets easier as time go by, like, you know. It don't really bother me. Well, people can smoke around me, and I'm not going to get mad. Or I mean, I might be a little jealous, but I, I don't want to get sick. Like, I'm stopping for a reason. Like, weed makes me sick, period. Like, I'm not going back to the hospital over there. Like, I be in the hospital crying, and I think I have a high pain tolerance. So if I'm crying, oh, I'm in pain. And you also mentioned the word depression uh self-diagnosed no phrase no my psychiatrist diagnosed me with that uh i took a personality test it was a lot of questions on there too like it was oh my god it was so many questions but i was diagnosed with um anxiety mild depression and bipolar and have you overcome any of these um findings yeah i mean i deal with it you know Take my little medicine. <laughs> I deal with it, you know. Now, when it comes to the weight loss rumor, is this something you've addressed publicly already, or is this the first time? No, nah, I don't really, I don't really address stuff like that for real, or especially on social media because I'll get mad and I'll clap back, and then I'm in there with my page deleted or something like that. So I just let like my mama or my friends or whatever, they say what they want to say, but not me personally, because Instagram done already sent me the little thing like, hey, you want thin ice? So I'm like, oh yeah, uh-uh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm on live or something, if somebody tried me, I'll be like, all right, bro, you tripping, but like, I don't be entertaining all that for real. And for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share your screen name on IG? Uh, my screen name is she is Blake. Now, when it comes to questions, is there a question you receive you dislike getting asked? Something you can't stand to answer, perhaps. Maybe it's a repetitive question, something you receive all the time. Could be from fans or strangers asking you this. Mm, they be asking me. I wouldn't say it's nothing in particular that just pissed me off, for real, for real. Oh, my age. That pisses me off. I ain't gonna lie. That do kind of piss me off a little bit, my age. Because, like like I said, you know, my character, I was a little younger. So, whenever I was kind of hiding it, like, because they kind of didn't want me to say my age, for real, for real. It was, it was kind of like a little secret. So I'd kind of get mad, like, bruh, what's your real age? What's your real age? Like, it kind of pissed me off. Because I always wanted to say my age. I, I like being 21. However old I was, but I, I'm like, I'm not no little girl, though. You know, they would always ask me that. And they don't really ask that too much, not of. And you've mentioned it previously, but just to reiterate, care to share your birthday as well, the month and the day. Yeah, September 14th. When it comes to questions, have people questioned your sexual orientation? Not your gender identity, but your sexual orientation. Mm-mm, not really. Just for the record, care to share what that is exactly? 
I'm straight. <laughs> Anything else you want to mention about your sexuality or question you weren't asked, people want to know about it. Mm, not really. Shit, I'm straight. Simple. I like boys. Ha! <laughs> And when it also comes to questions, also in regards to your body and beauty, how far have you gone for that? Uh, like what you mean? Ever had any cosmetic procedures, perhaps? Um, yeah, I did. I got my lip, I got my lips done. I got lip fillers, but they was they wasn't like the permanent ones. They was the uh. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, hyaluronic acid, I think. Man, that shit. Oh, yeah. I fucked my face up. Uh, my lips had like, man, they had got so big. Like, yeah, I fucked up with that one. Um, good thing it wasn't permanent. My lips went down and probably like back to normal in like a day or two. <laughs> but yeah, I messed my lips up, y'all. So after that, I'm like, oh no, you know what? Mm -mm. I am done. But, like, I ain't getting, like, clearly I ain't getting nothing done. Like, mm -mm. Ever been, excuse me, even before the lips, ever been questioned or accused of a cosmetic procedure, perhaps? Um, not really. Yeah, no, nah, not really. They, they know I'm natural. What is your opinion on cosmetic procedures at this point? Um, do whatever makes you happy, honestly. You know, I'm, I'm trying to hold it down for us natural girls, though. You know, I mean, I'd love to have a big ass, big titties, all that. I'd love to. And I'm still not even into my grown woman body yet, so the big ass and big titties is probably going to come. It is going to come. It's going to come, you know. But, hey, do whatever makes you happy. If you want that BBL, girl, go get it. Like, get that ass. Now, being in the music or acting industries, is there a pressure to enhance? Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I see that, I be like, damn. Like, damn. But I know I, I'm like, I'm so pretty. Like, it don't even matter. It don't matter. So. Anyone in either of these industries encourage or discourage enhancing your body? Mm, not really. I don't really be too, you know, like. What's the word? Nobody really influences me too much to do. I'm not really, you know, I don't be in a peer pressure. Or like, I'm not really too much of a follower. I mean, like I said, I, if I see a fine girl and, like, that ass is right, the body is right, I'm like, damn, sometimes. But, hey, I, I'll, I'll get it naturally, you know. Like I said, I'm trying to hold it down for us natural girls because, you know, it's not, it's not too, too many. And... You've mentioned this previously, but just to reiterate, care to share your current age? I'm 21. When you got the lip injection, do you remember what age you were at the time? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not to remember. Was that for my, uh, yeah, that was for my 20th birthday, actually. <laughs> um, then my boyfriend at the time, he paid for it. He was so mad when I got back to the house, like... <laughs> Yeah, I was 20. It was right before my birthday. I was, like, freaking out, like, oh, what if they don't go down? Like, Lord. And speaking of this boyfriend at the time, did he encourage you to get this done, or is this something you wanted on your own? He just sponsored it. So. Yeah, no. Um, That was something I wanted. He he don't even really care for all that. He don't, he didn't even like all that, but he was like, hey, if you, if that's what you want to do, then go ahead. But he don't even care for all that. Did he try to discourage you from even doing that? Uh, probably so. Probably so, but he was mad when I got to the house, though, because my lips were so, y'all, like, I was embarrassed. Like, I just had to go to sleep. I just quit to sleep. Like, I'm just like, fuck everybody right now. Like, no, bruh. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Like, oh, yeah, uh-uh. Now, what's the earliest in age you know personally of females to get a cosmetic procedure. You were 20, but what about other females you may know of? Uh, what you mean, like other girls that I know? Yeah, how early in age have you seen females, acquaintances, things of that nature, to get a cosmetic procedure? Mm. Or was 20 and you 
attempting yeah, this. Yeah, uh-uh, the no. I see. mean, I was real young, you know. I knew girls was getting their titties done and all that. When I was, like, yeah, super young, I always wanted titties. Now, I ain't gonna lie. That's something I always kind of wanted done, though. Like, i just been obsessed with titties. I don't know. I, just, I always wanted them. Probably because I just never had them. But the girls with titties be saying, girl, no, you good with chores because they be all in the way and stuff. So, But, yeah, ever since I always, you know, I grew up doing pageants and cheer, you know, and stuff like that. So we, yeah, I know about, yeah. Maybe Let me rephrase, because I may be confusing here, confusing you here, but do you know any females 20 or less that was getting cosmetic procedures? Uh, nah, not not really 20 or less, not that young. I mean, um, didn't, um, didn't Kylie get her lips done or something around that age? I, I think so. I don't. I don't know. I think so. But I'm. Yeah. I don't really. Not. Not really that young. At twenty, what was your mother's thoughts on the lip injection? Go for it. I mean, me and my mama is like best friends, so it's not like she really. You know, my mama really be cool with a lot of the stuff that you know. As long as it makes me happy, and I'm not doing nothing crazy or nothing to harm myself. You know, she's my biggest supporter. Do you tell her everything? Yeah, I tell my mama everything. Like, people be like, you told your mama that? Yep, I did. Now, were you always this pretty or grew into it? Mm, I was always a bad bitch. Like I said, I grew up doing pageants, and I've won all of them that I did. You know, I was, I was always a bad bitch, period. Now, speaking of pageants, was that something you wanted to do on your own? Or were you pressured to do a pageant? Um, no, nah, I wanted to do it on my own. I remember me and my cousins was talking about it one day, like, oh, we should do this. And we did the pageant. I never was forced to do nothing in my life. Like, my career, pageants, cheer, that was all stuff that I wanted to do. So, like, if I wanted to quit whatever I was doing right then and there, okay, my parents would have been like, all right with it. Like, on to the next. What else you want to do now? Like, so that was all stuff I wanted to do. Who do you credit for your looks? Mother's side, father's side, or both? Mm, I'll credit both. Um, Yeah, you can say both. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, I say both because I feel like it's like a middle blend of, oh, you look like your mama, or you look like your daddy. I don't, th I don't think they really say that I look like one more than the other. I'm a perfect blend. And for those in the audience wanting to know, what is it really like being pretty? Um, it's great. You know, pretty pretty privilege is real. Um, I love being pretty. It's cute. Like, it's just, yeah, I, I don't see myself being anything other than pretty. You know, I'm not just a pretty face, though, you know. I got personality. But, yeah, it's, it's good. It's shit, hell yeah. Any other pros or cons of being pretty? Mm, maybe some people may think that you may not work hard for some stuff as others because it might just be given to you because you're pretty. Like I said, like pretty privilege is real, but I'm more than just a pretty face. I got personality. I got a good work ethic. You know, I do stuff. I'm not just a pretty face. So. Ever get tired of being pretty? Ever wish you weren't so pretty? <laughs> I mean, I don't wish that, but somehow it's just like, Lord, like, give me a break or something. Like, Lord, it's just too much, like, you know. But I don't, I don't be wishing I wasn't pretty or nothing like that. Hell no. Now, you mentioned the Lord here. Do you follow a religion by any chance? Yes, I'm Christian. And why that religion for you? Um, well, that's how I grew up. You know, I'm crazy. I may cuss. I'm, I may do whatever, but I do know God, though. Like, I grew up in the church. My first solo uh, was in church when I was four years old. And you were raised under Christianity from the mother's side of your family, father's side of your family, or both? Both. And does it get any more specific under that religion for you, like a particular branch of Christianity, for example? Um, yeah, I'm non-denominational. How long... Have you been in the music industry for at this point? Mm, I recorded my first single at 10 years old, so that is 11 years. Yeah. Now, there are some in the audience wondering, 
is the Illuminati real? Mm, shit, I don't know. Probably so. They ain't never come to me or nothing like that. So, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe it's real. Anything else you want to mention about this? Or question you weren't asked? People want to know about that. Mm, what the Illuminati? Yeah. Oh. No. Nah. Ha! <laughs> uh-uh. I don't, I don't know too much about them. Just an assumption. Yeah, just an assumption. I, like I said, they ain't never come to me. Like, I don't... I don't know. Now, do you have a music industry horror story? A bad experience while you were in the music industry? Um, the only thing I could say, um, the bad experiences is that, you know, working with some men... They tend to, you know, want to be unprofessional and try to talk to you and stuff like that. But that's just stuff that come with it. I wouldn't say it's like no horror story or like, you know, but it, it, that, that do get aggravating sometimes. Like, can we just work? Like, do it got to be all that? Like, you know, just be them, them men be tripping sometimes, you know? How do you navigate through that? Mm, well, you know, I got my team now, so they handle these niggas. I don't even, I don't gotta, like, no, I don't, no. You go all we go based off, you know, good energy, vibes for real, you know, I'm real big on that. I'm not just out here working with anybody, you know. Now, you were in a relationship with PNB Meat. <laughs> yeah. Who is a recording artist as well. Mm -hmm. Did that start out purely as a love interest? Like, either him or you finding a love interest in one another, or did that start off on a professional level and then love kind of got in, intertwined there? Nah, we knew. <laughs> no, um, it started off like, you know, we was fucking with each other. It was, I mean, you know, we did, you know, do some music and stuff together, but nah, like off rip, it was like, okay, I like you, you like me. Like, that was like, yeah. It wasn't a person using music to... Insert love in mm -mm, there. Not at all. And how did that even start, that relationship there? Um, A mutual friend, actually. Uh, somebody else in the um, PNB clique or whatever. I worked with uh, his sister in the studio, and he had came to uh, one of my sessions. And then, um, like, a few days later, I was on live, and I saw Mean had joined my live, and I was like, who is that? And then um, I, I guess the friend told him to join my live or whatever. Like, I don't know. And he was just commenting little stuff. But I really wasn't saying nothing. You know, I was acting bad. I really wasn't saying nothing. But after, I, I went lurk on his page after, like, oh, okay, cool. And then, yeah, we had, I think he had DM me or something like that. And then, yeah, the, the guy, our mutual friend was like, oh, yeah, that's a good bull for you. And I was like, okay. And I gave him my number, and I did. And then. He texts me, yer. <laughs> he texts me that, and I was like, hey. And then, yeah, it just was from there. And there is music between you two, but has any of that music ever been publicly released? Yeah, we ain't never, like, released nothing together. We made songs together, though, you know, but we ain't never, like, released any of them. How many songs together do you think you two have mm, in the vault? Probably about, like, five. Maybe like, yeah, probably like five, I think. And why didn't that music ever see the light of day? Uh, I don't know. It, I guess it's all about timing. You know, not saying that y'all still, like, would never hear it, you know. It'll probably drop, but we just, yeah, not really no certain reason why. Who was the first to initiate music between you two? Mm, uh, I'd probably say... His idea, your idea, very first collab. Yeah, probably. Um, well, actually, with the with, with somebody I was working with at the time, our first song came from you know him saying, "Okay, me, you probably should hop on it." But I mean, we would just be chilling in the house, and he'd be like, "Want to go record?" And then we'd just do it or whatever, because you know he know how to engineer and stuff like that. He would help me write and stuff like that. So yeah. Now, how long did this relationship between you two last for? Um, it would have been two years in June, yeah. Almost two years, almost. And why did this relationship end? Mm, 
I would just say nobody cheated or nothing like that. Like, it wasn't nothing all crazy. I would just say, you know, we all, no, nah, well, we, both of us, we just, you know, probably focusing on our careers right now. But, like, it's not like one person did something that was just major, like, oh, we had to break up. I mean, shit, I still hope we get married one day. We better. Technically speaking, who broke up with who? <laughs> um, I don't know. We we actually just we just stopped talking. We just kind of stopped talking. <laughs> I don't know, but we we would always break up with each other back and forth. All right, it's your turn. Now it's my turn. We would we we would, we don't be staying broken up for long though. I don't know this time, but yeah. So. This time, no terms, bad terms, good terms? Mm, I'd say um, we're not on bad terms for sure. Like, he's still following me and stuff like that. I mean, we just don't talk, but, you know, like, it's it, it's no beef or nothing like that. Like, I, I still love him. Like, yeah. It's, but, yeah, we'll always be cool. I mean, he on me. Like twice, like that's I'll forever have love for me. And care to share where the other tattoos located? Yeah, I got one right here, and I got one right here. And does he have? Was that reciprocated? He has tattoos of you two on his. Uh, body? Yeah, he got one, but we broke up where he could get the second one. So he got it on the opposite hand. So it's like that. Who got either of your names tattooed first? Mm, I got it first. And then he got it, and then, yeah, it was kind of like a back and forth. And like, right, I go, you go. I go, you go. Now, the first time you tat his name on your body, was that your own doing? Did he ask you to do that? Was we it some sort of deal <laughs> he was going to do his at some some point as well? or? We talked about it um, before. I don't know if he thought I was at. No, he knew. He knew I'm crazy. He knew I was going to get that. But, um... Yeah, we, we talked about it before, but I remember uh, he was in L.A. at the time I uh, had got it done. And I saw him a picture like, all right, I'm finna go do it for real. And he was like, he was gagging like, oh, dang, like, yeah, we locked in for real. Like, you know, but we always talked about it, though, like, let's get each other's names. How long into the relationship was it when you get the first one? Um, Rough estimate. Let me see, June... We met in May, but we got to, like, it was like a festival for real in June. So July, August, September, October. Yeah, I got it in October. And how long has it been since you two have been broken up? Uh, It's going to make two weeks tomorrow. Yeah, so, yeah, just two weeks. Don't know how long this breakup's going to last for, but <laughs> in the event this is a final breakup here. Uh-huh. What did this relationship teach you? What did you learn from it, if anything? Um, Almost two years with this person. I would consider him my first love, for real. I had other boyfriends, but I would consider him like, okay, like, that's my first love, for real. Like, I'm not playing by that. But um, he, I, I guess you could say he showed me how, you know, somebody is supposed to, you know, love me, for real. Because I ain't never really feel that from my other boyfriends. Like, I was with them, but, like, I ain't really, like, I don't know if they love me for real, but with him, like, I knew. Like, y'all can't, like, if I know one thing, I know that nigga love me. Like, I, I knew that. Like, okay, like, you know. And he would put me on game about little stuff. You know, he wouldn't play with me. He would, you know. He would, yeah. Have you mentioned him in your music? Not yeah. just collaborate, but mentioned him in your music? Yeah, we make songs about him. <laughs> has I any do. Has any of those songs seen the light of day yet? Um, not yet. Well, <laughs> one line I said in a <laughs> man, I'm wrong. I ain't <laughs> if you know what I'm talking, if you know, you know, in going harder, that little line I said, you know, but um. I got some other songs that's like really like, you know about him, some little cute little love songs, you know. They're going to come out real soon, though. Have you touched musically on the breakup at all in these last almost two weeks? Um, no, I haven't. I probably will, though. 
But yeah, I probably had it probably because I don't want to cry or nothing like that. I don't know. But I ain't, I ain't do it yet. And shit, I don't know if it's for real or not yet. So, I don't know. I don't know. And just for context, when's the last time you communicated with him? Um, on Friday is going to make two weeks. Yeah, Friday is going to make two weeks. Anything you want to say to him if he's watching or listening to this interview <laughs> right now? Call me! <laughs> nah, for real though. Um, like, what's up? Like, come on now. Like, stop playing. Call me. Where are you? Like, what are you doing? I love you. Yeah. <laughs> and we still getting married. Period. I'm not playing. Anything else you want to mention about this relationship or question you weren't asked, people want to know about it. Um, <laughs> not really. I mean, that was like my best friend, so, yeah. And when it comes to Instagram, for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share your screen name on IG as well? My screen name on IG is She Is Blake. Before this interview ends, is there anything else you were not asked, fans want to know, people want to know? Is there anything you want to address while you're here? Anything else you didn't get a chance to mention you'd like to mention now? Mm, not really. The only thing I could, you know, I, I had already kind of touched on it before, but, you know, like, y'all just really got to separate that character on Country Wayne, then like, you know, I had to just separate that from the real Blake. Cause like I said, I'm not a bitch in real life. I'm not a thief. I'm not disrespectful to my parents and stuff like that, you know. I'm really down to earth. I'm genuine. Like I'm not, I don't be on all that. And that's really it though that I say. Any loose ends you want to tie from this interview with the previous topics you were asked? Anything you failed to speak on? Anything that needs further clarification from what was said in this interview. Mm, nah, not if you don't think so. Any final words? Ha! <laughs> Any final words? Mm. YOLO. <clears throat> like, YOLO. You only live once. Live life to the fullest. You only live once, y'all. Everybody live like that. Um, and nothing in the world is more important than a laugh. But you can't laugh when you're dead. So just laugh it up. Just laugh, y'all. Y'all just got to laugh more. Just have fun. Like I said, YOLO.